Howdy folks, it's me, Manic Mark, coming to you from the Bunker System with Share Your Shit Thursday. It should be Saturday, then it would all kind of... And I shouldn't be vulgar right at the beginning of the video. It's Friday Record Day on Thursday, because I'm not going to do Friday Record Day on Friday, because I'm doing it on Thursday. And it's a pretty pretty good one today. It's It was slow, I had to go to many places, it took some time, but I got some good stuff. But first, in the mail... I was going to tell the carburetor story, but that seems somehow... I would have to insert the carburetor story up front, which is... Yeah, okay, I'll tell the carburetor story. So, my lawnmower started surging. My push mower, okay, from eBay, I scored two autographed Coral of Panda albums. Autographed Coral of Panda albums, uh, signed in 1973. Coral is, is very interesting. I, I'm not going to go through his life story, but he, he's anything that you got from him in person is signed and dated, which is really cool. This album, I think it says something festival, something, you know, I have to decipher it. Uh, maybe he played a festival and signed this one. I got both of these for, for 10 bucks. I know I have autographed copies of these already. But for ten bucks, I couldn't pass it up. And the seller was so nice, all the way from California. He also sent me Hypnotique, Corolla Pandit's album Hypnotique, along with it. It wasn't even part of the auction. He sent them in a really secure box, and he, you know, put these plastic record sleeves, and they came in sleeves. The albums came in sleeves. And he said he met Corolla Pandit when he was in a band in the 70s. He worked in a studio or something. It was just a very brief exchange. Um, but he, he met Coral in person. I don't know if Coral has signed these albums. Of that. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's the end of that story. And I thought, I need to rebuild the carburetor kit. I've had this mower for a long while. It still runs great, except now, of course, it's not. It's not the engine. It's carburetor. So whenever I go, there's, we have a really, really good lawnmower repair shop where everybody goes to and they buy parts for their mower. They've been there forever, and it's just a, it's a great re place to go get parts. Okay, but the two or three times I go there to buy something, and I take the carburetor or the model number, and they, 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 they're always like, well, that that's ancient. Everything I own is ancient now, including myself. It's that time in my life. That was an amazing transaction anyway. Let's go on to a limbo record on Palace, of all things. It looks like Private Press, but Palace was a budget label, and re a real budget label, and most of their albums didn't look like this on the cover. Fun. <laughs> they didn't spend any money. Uh, in, in a limbo album, who would have thought? Uh, Lord Jackson and his limbo gang on, on Palace. That's just wild. Another Caribbean... Uh, Record record from Nassau, the Bahamas, is more of Delmore. More, more, more of Delmore. Delmore who? Richie Delmore. Let's go on to the Magic Island. Normally you see this album in a white cover, gatefold, with a die cut. This is solid. and, and it's But it still opens up to the same inside... Um, Pages. It's got all these inside full color, very expensive uh, record to p produce. Many inside pages. It's it's not it's now the white version with the die cut. You f can find find them all over the place. This one, I don't know if I've ever seen this particular particular version of that record. I don't know which came first. Okay, that went on too long. Now, so this one, same thing. I take this carburetor and I hand it to the kid. He's like, eh, what's the model number on the mower? I said it's a Toro, com Toro commercial 21 inch deck. The model number is, I think, the name of the mower commercial. And it's great because it's the last mower when I bought it new back in 1989, 1990 maybe. It's big. It's not powered. And it's big. It's a motor with a blade on it. 21 inches is kind of big for a push mower. Okay. 
I had to sign a waiver because this was right at the end of the time when you could just buy a frickin' mower, an engine with a frickin' blade, frickin' spinning around, with no frickin' things all over the steering area. This was worth a dollar. It's the Torchbearers, the name of the idol, uh, idol Torchbearers. See, I, didn't, I couldn't even read. I don't even. I couldn't even read that until I, I, I read it on the label. The name of the album, it's called Love. Torchbearers is called Love. They're a gospel group. There they are on the back. Right there. Probably came from a radio station. I would. I, I think probably came from a radio station. Not for sale. It's a promotion copy. But I picked up an Anita Kerr album. That album I bought, I, I, I held up a few, a few like last week or so, it was sealed. I unsealed it, listened to it, and it's like light pop with vocal, um, light pop vocals in it. It was really pretty fun, and it's pretty rare, actually. <laughs> so I, I picked up, I found another one. Um, not another one, not the same one, but a different one produced by Anita Kerr. And what the hell, how can I not pick up... It's, looks, it's private press, but this guy, Marv Herzog, has made on the sound label a great number of records. And, I, and I had, I had, it was like supposed to be sold to um, like commercial, commercial mowing guys. And I had to sign a waiver saying that I was going to use it for commercial mowing. Just ridiculous. Anyway, so they look at the carburetor, the young kid, he's like, eh, what? It's like, is this off a spaceship, the, the Soyuz, is it Russian? I don't know. Flying Fingers. Everybody that plays the organ calls himself Flying Fingers. This is the third artist album I found who says, my fingers are flying on their album. Anyway, oh, Michael O'Day. Michael signed the album. He's definitely Irish, but he does a cover of The Impossible Dream, so... Always pick up a private press when they do a cover of the Impossible Dream. I don't know who John John Young Trio is. Themes and Things. 1961. It's on Argo, and it's definitely going to be jazz. There's a cover of Fever on it. There's another song. If you see, if you find an album with a the artist does a cover of Fever, Fever. You know what I'm saying? Pick it up because it's that's a hard song not to get right not to do in an interesting fashion. This probably will turn out to be nothing. I picked it up. The Bible, if I remember correctly, in this Dino, Dino De Laurentiis version of the Bible, there was a nude scene and there was a big uproar over this, this okay? So fortunately, the old guy that works there, one of the, the carburetor repair guy was right there. He came out, he's like, off a two-cycle, right? And I said, hell yeah. <clears throat> He didn't even look twice at my shirt, you know? He just let that slide right by. I wasn't wearing the blue shirt with the name tag. And my fingers were... No, they're not really clean. Anyway, I want to thank one of my viewers um, stopped by and helped me with the pronunciation of the song that I can't pronounce. Now, I'm just going to warn this person that just because you helped me, and I appreciate it, that I'm not... I, I, it took Tink three times to tell me how to pronounce Al Kaola's name. He's in here. I got a sample of his work in here. So it's going to take me a while. I got to go back and review that because. Mm. Anyway, it was hard. It was even hard to pronounce when you kind of spelled it out phonetically the way you did for me. Dick Hyman, Provocative Piano, Volume 2. I don't have this one on command. Voodoo Moon. He does a cover of Voodoo Moon. That should be fun. Saber Dance. I finally found a copy of this. It's not, the cover's not in the best condition. It's kind of dirty, and it's got seam splits, and the record, it'll probably play okay. I, I don't think it really matters. It's kind of scratchy. But it's, you know, it's a drug and, 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 and alcohol, anti-drug and alcohol um, story. This woman was probably an addict, I'm assuming, and she talks about her experiences of getting over her addiction and finding um, God, I think. It's sold a lot as an oddball album. I don't know. So I found a copy for a dollar. Get on with the story. So he says, do you know how much this carburetor cost? You can't find them when you do. They're $200. Oh, he goes, I can't get a, 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 a rebuild kit, which is what I was looking for. Parts are expensive. 
goes, but that's a hell of a mower you got there. I said, yeah, I know. I like it. I like to keep it running. i got to love this cover, too. It's a father-son team, Richard and Lauren Orchard. That's their real name. They're sitting there dressed in the same kind of suits with their accordions. A 21-channel sound, Brass on the Rebound. I have a 21-channel sound album. I'm guessing that they made more than one. I remember it being pretty good. This is definitely a different cover than the one that I've got. 21 channels, meaning they used 21 microphones and 21 channels to record the thing. Now, this was fun. Speaking of Alkaola, sounds for spies and private eyes. I've been looking for this one for some time. Picked it up today at a real record store. I had to pay $4 for it. Didn't think that was too bad. He says, just take this whole thing apart. Just take the whole carburetor completely apart. Take it completely apart. Clean it real good and shove wires up through the jets and all that. I'm like, cool, I've done that. I've taken carburetors apart. Uh, but usually, you know, the reason I just took it in is because this new, the new formulated crappy gas you got to buy to run everything in. For the older equipment, I think they've reformulated the diaphragms. There's little, really little thin pieces of thing stuff inside that's supposed to... You know, and that and the gas just takes all the the uh, for two dollars a really nice copy of the Ventures' tenth anniversary album. I assume it's on Liberty. I assume it's a compilation album. It has to be, of course. The cover's kind of kind of like not very venturey, adventurous. I don't think, but a two record clean two record set for two dollars. It'll be fun to listen to. This is great. Okay, Glory Spencer. Here's a gospel album. Gloria Spencer for once in my life. And I paid $7 for this. Why did I pay $7 for this? Well, Gloria Spencer is billed herself as the world's largest gospel singer at 600 and... I know the weight's on here someplace. 625 pounds! There she is. 625 pounds back in 1976. She probably didn't make it into 19, in the 1980s, would be my guess done with that. That's great. And last, but not least, just saved, because it's awesome, is, i got to take off the shrink, is a Vincent Bell album. Vincent Bell, Electric Sitar. Pop Goes the Electric Sitar. And there's a bunch of great covers on here, including covers of the Beatles' Eleanor Rigby and Quiet Village is on here. Going Out of My Head is also on here. What else is on here? More, the theme from Mondo Kane. That's cool. I don't think I've ever seen this album, okay? Vincent Bell. I know he only made two or three albums. Vincent Bell, he developed... I can't do it for you. I'm probably going to block a sample from this album. He developed the watery guitar sound that many um, musicians used in the 60s. It's, like a, it's hard to describe. But he, he developed an electronic device to run his guitar through. And he, he, he made guitars, in fact. that he made this choral sitar, Vincent Bell, he's got his name on it. He may have designed this, the sitar that he plays on this album. But he made, he, he did, made most of his money developing, selling stuff, I don't know. But to me, working as a studio musician, that was his, his bread and butter right there. So this was a whole lot of fun to find that very clean, flexible. It does, they don't work anymore because of that. And that's what I figured I'd have to replace, but apparently I don't. Because it's got a float in it, I guess, rather than... <laughs> Thank you.